I'd like to call this meeting to order and please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, the roll. Mayor Birchall. Here. District 1, Morissette. Here. District 2, Yakub Rod. Here. District 3, McCormick. Here. District 4, Weber. Here. District 5, Haggett. Here. District 6, Hall. Here. Okay. At this point in our agenda, we'll have a public hearing on an amendment to comprehensive plan changing land use designation of 3.81 acres located at the northwest quad quadrant of 35, State Highway 35 and Hanley Road part of the Heritage Greens plans residential development from the uh, neighborhood commercial to single and two family residential. Is there anyone here that would like to speak to that uh, item tonight? I'll ask one more time. Is there anyone that's here to speak to that agenda item tonight? I'll move to close public hearing. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Public hearing uh, has been closed. Uh, next, we have comments and suggestions from citizens present. If there's anyone here that would like to address the con uh, council, now is your time. That's not on the agenda. I know we have one here for sure. If you could come up to the microphone and uh, give us your name and address, please. I'd like to thank you, Ellen, and council members. Uh, my name is Jim Thomas. I uh, reside at 1140 Riverside Drive North in Hudson, Wisconsin. Uh, I was previously a uh, North Hudson Village Board trustee. I currently am vice president of the Lake Malaloo uh, Property Owners Association and uh, am a member of the Lake Malaloo Management Committee. Uh, I'm here tonight to just speak a little bit about uh, the Little Falls um, Lake and the upcoming drawdown and uh, the situations that uh, surround that. So what I've been trying to do uh, with um, is give everybody an unbiased opinion. I've had the opportunity of meeting with Dan Bauman, who is in charge of this with the DNR. And uh, I understand his concerns, and I want first and foremost to know that we and our committees are working with everybody on this matter. Um, we're not here to derail anything, but rather to make sure that the public understands everything that is going on. With that uh, being said, um, the issues that are in front of us currently are the fact that there have been two engineering studies done on the dam, the first one in 2011, a subsequent one in 2013. These um, engineering reports don't indicate that this dam is truly failing. It has four gates, two of them are inoperative, it needs a new control panel, and it needs a backup generator. But more so, the issue that is, is uh, facing the state of Wisconsin and, and all um, dams in the state are they have come up with what they call 100-year and 1,000-year worst-case scenarios. And what they have created is a, a spillway capacity for the Little Falls Dam. Currently, that spillway capacity indicates the dam needs to flow 16,700 cubic feet of water per second through the four floodgates before it goes over the, the dam <laughs> spillway. Um, that is a lot of water. Um, currently, as I'm standing here talking, there is approximately 100 to maybe 120 cubic feet of water per second. We realize that, you know, in a flood, in, a, in spring runoffs, this is going to increase, but these numbers are, I feel, not really a thousand year number, but more a biblical number that would involve Noah's building another ark, but uh, that's my opinion, so I should not go there. But what we did do is we did do a modeling study, and our watershed district is 200,000 acres. Um, if we were to put concrete over all of that 200,000 acres, 
and got one inch of rain per hour, that amount of water that would flow over the dam would be just under 20,000 cubic feet a minute, um, or a second, I'm sorry, 20,000. So just to get a gross grasp of this, there's no way that 80 or 90% of that water is not gonna be absorbed into the ground, but that's just a, a fact. But regardless, these are the numbers that we are facing, uh, everybody who lives on lake or is involved in it is facing. Our biggest concerns, and um, Dan was very honest and straightforward about this, we asked why the urgency to draw this down right now? Um, and he said they face a liability, but they did know about it in 2012 and 13, they just waited to do it, and now it's, sur it's truly an urgency in their opinion. Our concern um, is the lack of transparency that has surrounded this issue. Uh, also, the lack of structure and organization in uh, a project that has so much sensitivity and is so vulnerable. If things go wrong, uh, it could have a dramatic impact on, on all types of people. I know I have to limit this to five minutes, so I will keep it as short as possible, but those concerns that we face right now are number first and foremost, they have $3 million to work with. If the dam needs to be replaced to meet these 1,000-year requirements, it's not enough money. Um, I've had the fortune of speaking with Sheila Harsdorf a couple of times uh, and Dean Knutson and people that can have an impact on this, and, and there just isn't funding available above and beyond that. So what we need to determine is what their true course of action is. If they want to remove the dam, that's, that's fine. They, everybody says they don't want to, but there have been no requests for proposals or estimates or the due diligence that a typical project of this would, would require. So that is the one issue that we've got. The second issue that is absolutely huge is that when they removed the dam at Burkhart years back, um, massive amounts of silt went into Little Falls Lake. That silt still remains there. And we were supposed to have information as to the quantity and the content of that silt. I talked or I emailed Dan this morning. It still is not available. This seems shocking to me that there is potentially tens of thousands of cubic yards of silt that could even have toxicity in it, but yet this is gonna be drawn down in less than 30 days and we don't even know what's in there. And I hope he does, but I don't know that as I stand here right now um, from the email today. The other outreach and issues are Lake Malaloo. Um, obviously, I've got, I have a vested interest in, in it, but I'm not alone. There are a lot of people that use that lake. There are a lot of people that use Little Falls Lake. Um, and we just want to make sure that everybody with the DNR is doing what they can to assure that Little Falls Lake will remain and that Lake Malaloo doesn't just fill up with silt. Um, there are other more dramatic issues, there are environmental protection agency, nutrient loading and phosphorus loading limits in the St. Croix River. Lake Malalu is the fourth largest generator, uh, or the Willow River is the fourth largest generator of these nutrients of all of the 20 plus tributaries into the St. Croix. And the issue that stands in front of us is nothing has been done to evaluate this. There has been no word to any of the public entities that are going to be involved very quickly until the end, the first notice was the end of 2014. So with that, um, it is just our deepest concern that we reach out and find out what citizens, uh, community members, what their desire is for Little Falls Lake. If, if they think that they would like to continue to have a lake at the park. They need to be notified. They need to, they need to reach out and let people know that it is important. If it isn't important, um, then so be it. But I think that 
what has the body of water that divides Hudson from North Hudson is a cornerstone of this neighborhood and um, I could talk forever but my biggest concern is that this matter is held properly. One other issue is they have not, I talked to Marty England, as I stand here also they have not figured out what to do with the fish at this point unless something magical comes up they're going to draw the lake down six inches a day and and they have no plans to deal with silt abatement and the fish are going to potentially flow right over the dam and die in Lake Malalu. And it just, it breaks my heart. There's, there's too many children that, that are out there fishing. There's just too many lives that this is going to affect if it's not handled properly. So I hope that it is. There's going to be a meeting at the Hudson Town Board on Wednesday night. Dan is going to speak. I request, I would ask anybody who is hearing this to please participate, but more so let people know what your thoughts are. What time is that at, uh, Jim? I believe that is six o'clock on Wednesday. Okay. Thank you. Is there any questions? We really don't Take questions. Don't, okay, sounds good. I really do appreciate everybody's time. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Uh, anyone else that would like to speak to the council on any item that's not on the agenda? Okay, Madam Clerk. Oh, um, yes. I'm going to have to ask Marion Weber, uh, 604 Grandview Drive, Hudson. I'm going to have to ask Jim for some help on this, but there is a report online. Um, do you remember where, where it is? Is it a DNR or wh where is the report about this whole subject? Yeah, it's a D DNR website, but there's supposed to be a copy at the Hudson Town Hall and at this park right. office. And there would be a copy also at the Hudson Town Hall and the post office. So there is a report on this, and I, I think it is something that we should be concerned about because it's in response to a question about who, where are the final decisions going to come from about the future of the dam? Will it be repaired or will it be just taken out or what's going to happen to it? And even if you can get private funding to help support repairing or replacing the dam after the water is drawn down, the ultimate decision is going to be made by the DNR in Madison. And no matter if someone has the money to complete that project, it won't make any difference. So it's really something we need to be paying attention to. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Madam Clerk, the uh, discussion, possible action on consent agenda items. To approve the regular meeting minutes of <coughs> April 13th, 2015 and the organizational meeting minutes of April 21st, 2015. To approve claims for payment in the amount of $480,394.56. A detailed description is available in the clerk's office on request and is posted on the city's <laughs> website. Contingent on payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city and approval by the police department, approve the issuance of 41 regular operator's licenses for the period May 5, 2015 to June 30, 2017. Additional operator license information is available on request in the clerk's office. To approve the 5K color dash on Sunday, August 30th, 2015 at 1 p.m. in Lakefront Park. To approve implementing residential parking restrictions on Stag Circle, Spruce Drive, Pheasant Run, and Gray Fox Lane. Please pull that one for clarification. To approve removing the parking space on 2nd Street at Locust in front of Smile and Moose Restaurant. To approve the Yellowstone Trail event on June 6th through 7th, 2015 and designate it as a community event. To approve barricading Locust Street between 2nd Street and 3rd Street for the Locust Street Car Show on the third Sunday of each month, May through September 2015. To approve the Relay for Life event on Friday, June 26, 2015 from 4 o'clock p.m. to midnight in Lakefront Park. To approve the request for an agent change to Lori Bernard for Badger Hospitality doing business as Green Mill for the license year ending June 30th, 2015, contingent on approval by the police department and surrender of the current liquor license. To approve the issuance of fireworks paraphernalia sales permits for the sale dates of June 15th, 2015 to July 7th, 2015 inclusive, contingent on attendance at the mandatory meeting to Menards Fleet Farm of Menominee Incorporated and Charles Walker TNT fireworks for Target and Walmart <coughs> stores. 
to approve the final development plans for the 7,500 square foot Hudson Dog Care Facility at 2300 Jack Burrow Drive as proposed by Resource Logistics, Dan Lodge, with the condition that the development plans are amended to include the concrete driveway apron to the property line and inclusion of a valley gutter per, per city of Hudson standards. To approve the Hudson Booster Special Event Permit Application for Booster Days and designation as a community event contingent on having the Parks and Public Works Director review and approve the application plans and perform a pre-event and post-event inspection of the grounds. The City Attorney approving the Certificate of Insurance and payment of any outstanding debt owed to the City. To approve filling the vacant paramedic position to request the City and request that the City Administrator administrator undertake the recruitment process to fill the position. To approve the renewal application for a secondhand jewelry dealer license for David Inlow located at 523 Second Street for the period May 5, 2015 through December 31st, 2015 contingent on approval by the police department and payment of any outstanding debt owed to the city. To approve renewing the contract with all Croy inspections for another two years through May 5, 2017 and their fee schedule of $60 per residential and $100 per commercial inspection. To approve a bowling alley license for Hudson Bowling Center at 1801 Ward Avenue for 18 alleys. To place on file the quarterly reports of the police chief and the building inspector and the utility commission minutes of April 14th, 2015. That is all. That's plenty. <laughs> for approval. <laughs> second. We have approval and a second. Any discussion on any of the items? All those in favor? Right. Oh, roll call. Call. we have to do a roll call. Yeah. I'm sorry. Roll call vote. Yeah, Kubrad? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Hoggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. Hall? Yes. Morset? Yes. Okay, let's, uh, with that pass, let's go back to, um, <coughs> let's see, what was it, E? E. E, it was pulled. If you look at the committee recommendation, it is approval on implementation. Residential parking restriction on Stag, Circle, Spruce Drive, Pheasant Run, and Gray Fox Lane. It doesn't designate a side of the street. They they, we received an email letter requesting from the Spruce uh, Drive Association to be both sides of the street. Right. So I just want to make that very clear. Marty, does that, uh, does that ring a bell with you? Is everything? Yeah, well, we brought this up and it got approved. We forgot to mention that Evergreen um, housing development also wanted Spruce Drive to be um, the residential parking permit as well. I'd gotten their letter after the public safety meeting, but when public safety said Spruce Drive included, we just considered that to be the whole, okay. the whole Spruce Drive. Is that so, okay with everyone? Yep. Yeah. Andy? S yeah, so I'll move to approve that. Okay. Second. Discussion from anyone? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Planning Commission, uh, 7A. Discussion and possible action of application of a conditional use permit for the use of 426 Oak Street facility of OIC Youth to conduct supportive youth support, home services, mentoring service, small classes for meal preparations, group settings, garden, gardening, ETC, etc. Mr. Darnold. Good evening. Good evening. The uh, Planning Commission recommends approval of the conditional use permit to OIC Youth Strategies, Jennifer Nilsson, to operate on living skills counseling facility for use at 426 Oak Street with the following conditions. No more than eight people, including clients and staff, can be at the facility at 426 Oak Street at one time. Access shall be in compliance with Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA standards, prior to occupancy of the facility. Review of the permit one year after the date of occupancy. Staff members must be present at all times to provide supervision when clients are present at the site. Hours of operation are 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. No signage will be permitted other than required address signage. No overnight respite care can be deducted, can be conducted, <laughs> excuse me, until a proposal is submitted to the city for approval. Any required state of Wisconsin licenses or license that may be required must be provided to the city of Hudson for inclusion in the uh, permit file. The permit is not transferable without the approval of the city of Hudson. 
uh, in your packets, uh, there was a letter from uh, one of the local residents. Hopefully also I tried to include the plan commission review so you had a flavor of the public hearing that was uh, held uh, on this issue. Ms. Uh, Jennifer Nilsen from OIC Youth Services is here tonight to answer any questions that you may have and I don't know if there's any neighbors in the, in the audience that may also want to comment. Are there any neighbors that would like to comment or anyone else that would like to comment other than uh, Ms. Nielsen? Okay. Does anyone have any questions for her? I don't have any questions being on plan commission, but I would like to say I'm very excited for, for this to happen. I think, like I said in plan commission, I think our city has done a good job concentrating on seniors, but we've there's some issues with youth that we need to have more of these services in Hudson and I'm, I'm very excited to see that someone is willing to take this on so I'll move for approval. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion. <clears throat> all right, if there's no discussion or questions, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item eight, finance committee, discussion and possible action on budget transfers and adjustment. Mr. Welly. Um, there are three separate items. The <coughs> finance committee recommended approval of all three. They took them as one group. First item is, as you will notice outside on the north side of the building, we've had some major repairs where there were some old coal bins under the mayor's office that moisture and water was seeping through. Um, so they've started the work already. We got quotes for it. Um, we had bids, didn't we? We got quotes, yes. Yeah. And uh, you'll see that they they took the coal bins out, which took several days longer than I think they thought it was going to take because it was all concrete. And um, they've replaced it with blocks. And today they put the tar, lack of a better word. So we're hoping that eliminate the moisture. And then they're going to come back in and re-landscape that side of the building. So between that and the gutters, hopefully that'll alleviate some of the water issues that we've, you know, seepage issues. Um, so there was $18,000 that I'm recommending come out of contingency and go into the building repairs. Second item is a clerical error, if you will, last year's budget. Um, $2,000 was put in for the part-time police officers when we traditionally have had $20,000 in there. Mm -hmm. What I'm recommending is that there was some money left over in last year's police personnel budget that we just moved the $18,000 from last year into this year. That way it won't impact this year's budget. And the third item is when we switched insurance companies in 2009, the council at that time, just as a hedge against potential increases in the health insurance costs, established a health insurance premium reserve. We had to take a little bit out of it one year. The idea is if we had a big increase for some reason, that we'd have a little bit of cushion. Um, in 2012, 13, and 14, there were approximately 361,000 of unexpended personnel costs. With the Affordable Care Act, there may be some assessments and some fees that we'll be responsible for in the years ahead. Um, our insurance advisor has said potentially right now it looks like it would be sixty to 80000 but we really don't know. And it has nothing to do. Our, our plan meets all of the requirement. It's just the new fees and whatever. So what I'm recommending is we take that 361000 take it out of the undesignated reserve, move it into this account so we have the cushion not only for premium increases, but also if we do end up with fees or assessments. Um, Neil did look right now our un unreserved on, um, surplus is at about 50% of our annual budget. We're only required to have 27%. Even taking this out, we'll still be at 49%. So we'll still be in good financial shape even moving this. And you can move it back. Something else comes up down the road and we find we don't need this much. It could be reallocated to something else just by council motion. So those three items <coughs> I'm recommending as budget transfers and adjustments. Anyone have any questions uh, for Mr. Welly on that? Is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you, Devin. Um, discussion, possible action on letter of engagement for Bolton Mink for 2015 uh, street improvements. I think this is a, a standard letter that we're using for them. Um, this is one of our accounts that we, uh, one of the engineering firms that we contracted with and we've elected to use them for street improvements. It wasn't just for the riprap. 
No, it wasn't for the rip rat at all. They, when they sent us the contract, they changed it at the top but not at the bottom. It's for 2015 street improvements. So in the middle of the page there, it should read that. And I did send an email <coughs> today to everybody about that. I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. <coughs> Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, next item is discussion on, and possible action on uh, a liquor license renewal application. As you can see, there's 38 renewal liquor lessons, which goes from uh, July 1st, 2015 through 6-30-16 has been received. Again, with the fact that the following information with the police department filed with the city clerk, the, the building inspectors and fire inspectors are progressing. Um, and any debt that's outstanding, those are our conditions that uh, for approval, but we have every one of them and it is May 4th. That's, a, that's our earliest we've ever had all of them in. So good job, Nancy. And uh, we don't have to have a meeting on June 30th at June 8 30th at 8 p.m. <laughs> like we did one year. You mean 8 a.m.? Well, we had one late. Afternoon. Oh, a late one too. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, think it was 8 p.m., but it was late afternoon. Got the 30th. Anybody have any? Uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Item D was polled. Public safety discussion, possible action on Riverfest 2015 designation as a community event. I, okay, I'm sorry, I put this on there because the committee did not have recommendations. Right, we were waiting for more information. There was no one at the meeting that could answer the questions, so I see that Evie is here. Or Marilyn. Um, information, we, uh, callers, we just got in last night, and, and if you look at the second side of this, you'll see that our original plan was to go through public safety this week. So Randy, you haven't had it at public safety yet? Well, we had it, but we, we sent it up here, but we can certainly send it back to public safety this week if that's... For the rodeo part of it, correct? Right. And it's in July, so we still... Yeah, I'll make a motion to send it back to public safety for discussion. Uh, okay. Thank you. Is there, is there a second? Second. And yes. the only part I think that's under question is the bike rodeo portion, am I right? Correct. Yes. And that's what we had intended to take to public safety this Thursday? Thank you. Yep. Uh, all those in favor of sending it back? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, public Works. Discussion possible action authorization to proceed with plans for demolition and remodeling of restrooms and warming house at Burton Park. Mr. Zuli. Good evening. Good evening. Um, at the April 14th uh, Park Board meeting, uh, the pub, uh, Park Board recommended that we move forward, uh, bring this issue to Common Council for discussion and approval. Um, David Gray was nice enough to drop some plans that were in your packet um, for the renovation, not total reconstruction, but just remodeling of Burton Park restroom warming house. Um, there's some, the plans include um, putting a, a new hipped roof on uh, the roof and, you know, replacing uh, the restrooms, uh, the fixtures, uh, changing some doorways, some window way, you know, windows to make the uh, restrooms ADA compliant, also to add um, sinks and um, we can do this with the existing structure. Uh, I think there's potentially some work that the Public Works Department can do as far as some of the demolition with you know getting removing some of the fixtures and the floor, getting it ready for plumbing and things like that. Um, the funds, uh, we have some capital funds um, for this project. Um, I believe it's $86,000 we could um, put for this project, we'd like just uh, approval to move forward with final specs and get, you know, so we can get the process and get the project um, spec'd out and bid out. So you're gonna bring it back? You haven't got I'm just asking yet. for approval to move forward with the next phase. And the next phase is to go out and get bids? Go out, well, uh, get some specs. Uh, this is just a plan, a, you know, uh, uh, rough plan we still need to get some final specifications and I think that we can do even do that in-house okay 
I think I think it I think it's a good idea, but I this should come back to finance first. <coughs> after that, because I think Park Board refi uh, reports to finance. Okay. I remember how we operate, so it needs to come to Park Bo or to finance for approval to also. But I mean, we're skipping a step, and I, that's okay initially, but. I think it ought to come through finance. So we can move forward with the, if the, if the, the folks index here want to do that, it makes sense to me, but. Yeah, I'll move to approve to go to the next step. Is there a second Second. On that? And the 86, that's it. That's all the money you have, correct? That is, um, some of that money was moved 35,000 came from, from another park, Williams Park, right? Yeah. Okay. You think you can do it for 86,000? We're optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yep. Let's see. Discussion possible action on Ordinance 3 15 and Ordinance Amending City of Hudson Comprehensive Plan. Mr. Darnold. This is somewhat of a house cleaning item. In February and March of this year, there were public hearings conducted in regards to a conditional use permit amendment to Heritage Greens, modifying uh, this 3.81 acre area on the extreme southeast part of the Heritage Greens um, planned residential development, changing it from what was called flex, which allowed both commercial or uh, residential development and commercial development to one family that went through, council approved it. And one of the conditions of the approval of the conditional use permit was an amendment to the comprehensive plan, and that's uh, where we're at tonight. Um, be the prerogative of the common council, if they would consider uh, action, it would be suspend the rules. Okay. I move to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second. Um, roll call. Yakub yeah, Rod? Yes. Haggett? Yes. Weber? Yes. McCormick? Yes. Morissette? Yes. Hall? Yes. Uh -huh. Move to approve ordinance 3 15. Second. Discussion? <laughs> there were no, I just commented, there were no public comments None. throughout this entire process. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Uh, discussion possible um, possible action related to combined utility director position approval of position description authorization for city administrator to begin recruitment process establish a salary range and make up interview committee mr. well um, as you're aware the with the retirement of our water and wastewater directors um, I was asked to look to see about combining the finance committee <coughs> recommended that we look at a combined position the water utility board was in favor of it as well. Um, so there's really three items, why we've taken all as one are separate items. One is to approve the position description and authorize me to start the recruitment. The second would be to either establish a salary range or to leave it open depending on qualifications, that would be up to you. And the third item, whether you wanna talk about it now or later would be the make up the interview committee. The one item the utility commission did ask is that, you know, they would have at least one member from the utility commission on the interview committee. So those are just the three items that we I would like discussed and give, given direction on. Any thoughts or comments? What's a general starting salary for? Well, that's the 75 to 80 is what some of them are at. But you know, on the other hand, what you could do is put depending on qualifications and have them submit what they would require for a salary because sometimes that will either someone will ask for you know, 300,000, I'm exaggerating, but they'll ask sure. for way more than you're comfortable with. Well, there's no sense of bringing that person in right. if it's going to be substantially more. And we've done that sometimes, left it open and asked them to tell us what range they're looking at. So that would be an option because, you know, it's hard to judge Hudson versus different parts of the state because, you know, the well, economies combined, are different and yeah, markets are different. It's a combined position and there's a lot of certification stuff involved yep. Yep. too. Right. So like to keep, keep, keep it open. open. Okay. I think we and should keep fine. it open mm -hmm. too. And that, again, we, that way you know when they come in whether it's even someone that you even want to consider based on what they're asking yeah. for. So, okay. People okay with that? Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then what about the interview committee? Why don't we uh, see if we get some... Uh, see what yeah. we get first yeah. and we can set... Okay. Yeah. And if anybody wants to serve on it, let me know. So really the only thing then would be just to approve the job description and authorize me to... 
get started. Take a look at that. Uh, anybody spent a lot of time on that, taking a look at it? But it seemed pretty complete to me. I thought so too. Yep. Unless anybody sees the change they'd like to make. This is kind of a combination of other ones I found, plus the water, our wastewater and our water. To try I, I've to never seen the physical requirements portion of the your employee is frequently required to sit, talk, or hear, stand, walk, <laughs> use hands. To <laughs> That's put in there as kind of a CYA. You right. Know, I get that. I just have you never potentially seen that could before. have something. Well, you never told me I had to stand up when I was working. Fine, <laughs> I'll stoop, kneel, crouch. No. Yeah. Standing on concrete can be very hard Break on your body. Dance. Climbing ladders. You know, Muscle. some people may not be comfortable with that. So. Yeah. Me. Okay, yep. we, you want an approval? You want a motion? Uh, a, a motion to approve the position description and authorize me to start the process. Move, I'll move for an approval of the position description and authorize Devin to start the process. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> um, communications and recommendations for the mayor. I think if you will look at your, your packet today or your computer, uh, first quarter, we had 36 million, almost 37 million dollars in building permits. So Denny's department up there with uh, David, I think, is David still here? No, he, yeah, there he is. They've been busy. So that, that's, a, that's quite a uh, huge number and there's more coming. Correct, Mr. Darnold? Correct. So that's, uh, we're, we're really humming. That's a, that's a good thing. Um, what year, does that, is there a year that we That's a quarter. Um, yeah, oh, comparison? Looking, looking back. You have a comparison, David, compared to last year? Uh, no, it's not in my head, but um, highest ever is 66 million. The what? The highest? Highest ever was 66 million. Okay, so we're half there. Off the top of my head, we had 39 million the whole year last year. The whole year. <laughs> okay. So we did 36 in the first quarter. That would be a good, <laughs> good comparison for me. <clears throat> Next, I have a proclamation for uh, Power Up for Kids Week proclam uh, pro proclamation. Whereas the city of Hudson wants to support its children, families, and residents in leading healthy lives, and whereas the foods and the beverages provided to children and the lack of physical activity contribute to rising rates of childhood obesity in the recent years, and whereas something's not done to reverse these trends, children will be the first time in history to have shorter life and less healthy lives than their parents. And whereas we believe we can work together to transform the places where children and families live, learn and play to do what's best for the kids. Whereas we are in a position to provide, promote, support opportunities for recreation, physical activities and access to better food, beverages through our programs, events, partnerships, practices and policies. Whereas we also have the opportunity to support health for the whole community through supporting bike and pedestrian friendly streets, public transportation, access to healthy foods and beverages, and easy access to parks, trails, and active spaces. Whereas Power Up is a community-wide initiative supported by the Hudson Hospital and Clinics and health partners to make it easy, fun, and popular for kids and families to eat better and to achieve and to be active so that kids in our community can reach, reach their full potential. <coughs> <laughs> now, therefore, I, Alan D. Birchall, Mayor, proclaim May 9th through May 16th as Power Up for Kids Week in the City of Hudson. Call upon all citizens to participate in the Power Up for Kids Week celebration <clears throat> and to support and share the goal of working together to create a healthier community for our kids. So that's, that's the other thing. Um, communications from any other council members? Mary? You just didn't want to call on me, did you? <laughs> Hudson's worst kept secret. Today I'm giving notice of my pending resignation from the Hudson City Council. For the last five and a half years, I have worked to better our city and to do what is best for not only District 2, but the city as a whole. During my election of this past term, I went through a divorce and was able to stay within the district boundaries. As my family has grown, staying in my current home just does not make sense anymore. My children are my number one priority, and for them, I want more. To accomplish that, I have to look beyond my current situation and more into the future. With that in mind, I found a great home for our family in the township of Hudson and will be moving at the end of May. I was not expecting to leave my seat early, but life goes on and I believe that God has a plan for all of us and everything happens for a reason. Although this decision was, has not come easily for me, my last day in my seat will be May 20th, 2015. I will continue to work as hard as I have for the last five and a half years until I can no longer ethically hold my seat. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? 
City Attorney. No. City Administrator. Well, I'll have something to say at the next meeting then. <laughs> <laughs> um, if not, we uh, will have a adjourn. motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're adjourned.